Eli 5 Why are there so many female birth control options for females but only condoms and vasectomies for men? Condoms and vasectomies are infinitely better than the options women have. IUDs are very dangerous and get scar tissue grown around them at times, permanently impacting women's ability to reproduce, and birth control is a hormone-altering drug that results in all kinds of shitty side effects. I got a vasectomy a few years ago and it took 10 minutes. For a woman to get a vasectomy, it's a major procedure and most doctors won't do it unless a woman is a certain age. The question is, why are men's birth control options so good and women's aren't? The natural counterpart to estrogen analogs and female birth control would be a testosterone analog. Injections with testosterone actually work very well as an effective male birth control. The problem is that while estrogens don't cause that much in an already developed female body though it does cause issues with thickened blood etc. Testosterone has a major side effect in that it is an anabolic, i.e. it makes your muscles grow and bones stronger. We can't have men walking around all juiced up all the time, apparently. All these medical points aside, picture a guy after 3 months in the relationship. They start going at it. He's about to come down worry babe, am on birth control, pregnant. Oops, I guess these things fail sometimes. How do you make sure, your partner is being honest? Besides. There's definitely something hot about unprotected sex, or getting a girl pregnant from the man's side. It's a turn on, it's risky, it's forbidden. Men also don't need to think about the consequences as much. There are natural mechanisms in the woman's body that prevent new pregnancies namely pregnancy. Birth control pills are an hormonal nudge that mimic an existing pregnancy, allowing effective control that is demonstrably reversible. No such mechanism exists naturally in men. The chemical nudge is far more like hitting a brick wall. The scientific theory to find a chemical pathway that could reversibly change a man's fertility took a lot longer to develop, to test, and to market. The FDA. A female birth control option can gain approval if it's safer than pregnancy. Pregnancy is pretty dangerous so it's actually a pretty low bar to get approval. A male birth control option can gain approval only if it's 100 safe for the male. Since men don't have pregnancy risk. It has to be equally safe as a placebo, or at least not dangerous in a statistically significant way. Eli 5 The bar is lower for girls because because pregnancy is only dangerous for girls. All men have to do is stop sperm from leaving the body. Pretty simple. Condoms usually do the job but can fail. Vasectomy will definitely work and doesn't generally cause any side effects. A pill is fairly unnecessary. Women's anatomy and hormones in particular are a whole other kettle of fish. Women can have awful side effects from intrauterine devices IUDs or the various pills available. Female condoms exist but they're a lot more awkward than men's condoms. Because, unfortunately, many hormonal options for male birth control also cause impotence or decrease libido and thus defeat the point of it being a birth control since it needs to allow you to have sex. Why? Because they interfere with testosterone in some way and testosterone is needed for your dick to get hard and feel horny. This parallel doesn't really happen with women. Life isn't fair. Science is trying to find a workaround though. Because the bar to approving a new medication is showing that its side effects are not worse than the condition it prevents. Pregnancy has no effect on the sperm provider's body, thus no side effects are permissible. It's the only type of medication I can think of where the desired effect is to prevent something happening to someone else. Even HIV and HPV vaccines protect the person as well as others they may have sexual contact with. To prevent the making of a baby all you have to do is prevent one of the steps that is necessary for baby making. It doesn't really matter which step you prevent, as long as it's necessary. The reason women have many more options is that almost all of the necessary steps take place in their body. Men only have a couple options because we really only contribute to the first necessary step. So it's the only one we can interfere with. Because men have the ultimate solution run away from the problems and vanish into the ether, leaving the pregnant girl with all the problems. Therefore they can allow themselves the comfort of not wanting to mess around with their body or hormones, it's ultimately not really their problem. I'm not saying anyone should do this, mind you, it's a nothing to do. But these products likely wouldn't sell, so they don't make them. Two problems here, those aren't the only options for men. Second problem. Systemically burden of birth control has been placed on women. It shouldn't be surprising that if burden is being placed on someone else, optional research focus isn't exactly intensive. 
The most recent PubMed I saw on it dealt with a liquid material injected into the vast efferents that sets off like expanding foam in an electrical conduit. I think the best simple answer is that female reproductive organs are complex, and have multiple ways the process can be disrupted. These can include physical berries, chemical processes, a mixture of the two, and for long-term or short-term effectiveness. To make a dumb analogy to machinery, there are a lot of ways you can prevent a car from starting, but only a couple of ways from stopping a bouncing ball, because there are side effects with birth control. There were and are pills in development for men, but even if they have less side effects than the pills for women, they don't get accepted. Because women get the direct result of pregnancy with possible dying and a lot of physical problems it is said it's no problem if the birth control for them influences sex drive or more depression or risks for blood clots. In a nutshell there are products for men, but imagine if you are about to sleep with someone and they ask do you have a condom? And you reply I have an implanted sperm blocking mechanism. It's not unreasonable that she may doubt you. Men have, historically, had the option to impregnate women before fleeing. I think it may have more to do with social trust issues in the patriarchy than many recognize. Because birth control or indeed anything to do with babies in general has traditionally been seen as a female responsibility. It's not that long ago that men could do what they want and then just, walk away if they didn't want to deal with the pregnancy. Plus I think there are technical issues in that stopping ovulation for a woman is a very different process from stopping sperm production in a man. I heard this from the doctor once and this is much more of a philosophical answer than a medical scientific one. Do you feel like you can trust men to stay on top of their birth control so that you don't get pregnant? They're statistically less likely to get regular SCI screenings and are also known to withhold positive results more often than women. Or something to that effect. Not an exact quote, I heard this from the doctor once and this is much more of a philosophical answer than a medical scientific one. Do you feel like you can trust men to stay on top of their birth control so that you don't get pregnant? They're statistically less likely to get regular SCI screenings and are also known to withhold positive results more often than women. Or something to that effect. Not an exact quote, something I've not seen yet after going through the chop comments is that, aside from pregnancy, simply having a period is its own hell. Since many birth control options interrupt the cycle it can also reduce or remove all the problems associated with periods. Birth control for men isn't just harder, but since males don't have to worry about all that other shit, there isn't a need for it either. There have been some options developed for men, but the side effects were considered too problematic. My understanding is that those side effects were actually pretty similar to the side effects of female hormonal contraceptives, but because pregnancy comes with the risk of death while impregnating someone else doesn't, the risk-benefit for the patient wasn't the scene at being the same. There is a birth control cream for men that's been developed in Sweden. So far the trials are looking very promising with a 100 success rate and no fertility issues when coming off it. The kicker is that as opposed to women's birth control options that almost universally have negative side effects, this cream boasts the side effects of increased muscle gain and sex drive. I've heard it's been said, perhaps by me, that there have been numerous clinical trials for male birth control. And none have seen their day on the market. I assume it has to do with how much more dangerous it can become messing with male hormones than females. At worst, we fucking kill people. That is, of course, from my reliable source, who may be by chance, myself. The side effects of drugs need to be better than the side effects of the alternative. The side effects of woman's birth control is comparable to side effects of pregnancy. Men's side effects is either from medication procedure or none at all. Therefore we have any different options for woman's birth control. Plus all the easier to control hormones others mentioned. Having women pay for monthly birth control is more lucrative than a one-shot solution like vasectomy or vashalcal for men. The federal government also reimburses each state 66 of their expenditures related to child support, and child support is used to fund judicial retirement pensions. And since men allegedly earn more, that means more money for the state. Women's bodies have a natural mechanism in place to pause the entire menstrual cycle which includes releasing eggs. This happens during pregnancy. Female birth control gives women more control of that mechanism. Men's bodies do not have a mechanism to stop sperm production. So finding an artificial means to do that and be reversible is much trickier. Female birth control are mostly hormonal while male contraceptives are non-hormonal. The hormonal approach for women needs to have more variety because it's not only used to prevent pregnancies. 
Contraceptives for men are focused on physically blocking the sperm from the egg because it's hard to stunt sperm production for men via hormone control. If the female birth control is 99 effective that means each month they have a 99 chance of that ova not being capable of creating a baby during the 2-4 days each month that would even be possible. If a male birth control is 99 effective, that means that they are still deploying thousands of fertile sperm, every single day of the month. Because men develop multiple millions of themselves in the form of sperm every single day, and females release one on average a month. It is much harder to prevent multiple millions of copies of men from reaching the one copy on the female side than it is to prevent the one copy of the female from being accessible in the first place. In high school a professor told us that the female system is way more complex than the male one in this regard. Figuratively you can remove a small gear in the complex female system and reach your goal. In the simple male system there are like two big gears and if you remove one you screw other things. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Scientists have recently discovered a nerve in the bottom of men's feet that triggers a little known or understood response when activated. Pfizer led the field in investigating this response and found when their carefully studied control group was outfitted with a large bill in their shoes, it made them limp. I'm pretty sure the male bill has already been created and has similar health consequences as the female pill hormone changes, mood altering, heart issues. But the side effects were treated more seriously, whereas for women, the side effects are risks because pregnancy, pregnant woman, can be a worse outcome for some. It's easier to stop one egg per month than 100 million sperm per ejaculation. Assuming weekly sex, if you're 99.9 .9 effective in stopping eggs you will probably not get pregnant over the course of a whole life. Even if you're 99.99999 .9 .9 .9 .9 .9 .9 effective you could still get someone pregnant every month.